Bringing hope, equipping lives, affecting destiny. He loves me and finds me very Let's just pull it off and let's begin to keep that worship this morning. Begin to bless him. There is no one like him. He is called all by himself. He alone is worthy of our praise. He alone is worthy of our worship. We search all over. There is nobody like our God. Just bless him with the fruits of your lips this morning. No one else can touch my heart like you do.
Thank <laughs> you.
that whatever you call your situation this morning, that is what God will answer to. If you call God the covenant keeping God, is another way of committing God to that particular situation. If you call him the way maker, that is the name he calls himself, say, I will make a way for you in the wilderness. If you call him a miracle worker, say, I will bring out water from the waterless pit. Water will start to gush out in the desert, a dry land. What do you want to call God? Your God this morning. Open your mouth and call him to your situation and give him a name that you want him to answer to even this morning. Lord, you are the way maker. Lord, you are the problem solver. Lord, you are the answer to every situation. Nothing is bigger than you, Lord. of all the biggest. You are the creator and yet you are uncreated. Verses 12 and 13. Psalm 116, verses 12 and 13. The war shall I render to you, my Lord, for all his benefits that has come to me. I will take the cup of salvation. And I will call upon his name. Before our very eyes, the month of July is being enveloped. What can we render back to God? David asked himself, What can I render back to God? For all the good things that he has done. For all his benefits, I will take the cup of salvation. The cup of salvation is the cup of deliverance. The cup of salvation is the cup of thanksgiving. I will take the cup of salvation and I will call upon his name.
very ephemeral. It appears and does what? And disappears. Fleeting. We just have a taste of it. But there is a lasting greatness. That is what David prayed for. You shall increase my greatness. He was speaking prophetically that three three thousand years ago he lived, and up to today, the greatness of David is still being celebrated. God will increase the greatness of your children. children that will come and just go without leaving a mark but that will not be your children Amen. every man that has made a name was born by a woman he or she came by the same route that your children came from They have only one head, they have two legs, they have just one liver, they have just two kidneys, and possibly don't some may even have just one. But because the hand of God is upon their lives, their greatness has gone beyond measure. And that is what I wish for everyone in this auditorium this morning. I say, God will increase your greatness. He will increase the greatness of your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not labor in vain over your children. Oh, you will hit the fruit of your labor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to call upon God again. Lord, increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Every actor's cattle running comes to an end today. Every trouble that you have experienced over your children has come to an end today. Your presence, 
that you may increase even in our lives. Thank you, precious Father. Father, the time has come for your word and not our years. Open our eyes that we may see. Give ear into our ear that we may hear. Let the spirit of understanding let it suddenly fall upon us like never before that we may be able to trade even with your word. Thank you, precious Father. Lord, we are ready. Our, heart, our minds are made up to receive the word of life. Speak to us, Lord, like never before. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. It's my prayer to invite our brother, Brother Owe, to the podium. Let's give him a round of applause. Encourage him, please. Encourage him. Encourage me. Encourage me. I will quickly pray that uh, thank God God is taking over. And, uh, <laughs> thank God God is taking over and uh, I won't have to come up here. <laughs> Jesus, help me. Praise the Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Uh, it's a great thing for God to be in the house. While God is here, I just want to assure you that if your heart is open to Him, He will heal any situation in your life. Be it financial, be it emotional, be it career. God is in the business of blessing His people. Even if I don't want to bless you, God wants to bless you. <laughs> Even if I want to curse you, God wants to. We saw that in the Bible. When Balaam wanted to curse his people, God is a father that loves to bless his people. He is in the habit of blessing. Even when God decides to chastise you, he's actually preparing you for that blessing. So if you open your heart, you will receive a blessing from the Father this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today we're going to be talking about a, a, we're going to be doing a topic that, honestly speaking, if you look at the whole of me like this, I'm not qualified. <laughs> Daddy gave me a big task. The whole of me is not qualified to teach this topic. Uh, but thank God that I'm not the one that will have to teach it. We'll just have to trust God uh, to help us this morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, the topic is there. Thank you so much. Your time your life. Praise the Lord. Um, John, just want to read the scripture. I wrote it down here um, when I was preparing. I don't remember what it says again. Um, I don't even know why I wrote it down, but maybe if I read it, God will remind me. If it doesn't remind me, then it wasn't really to them. John chapter 4 verse 38. It says, I sent you to reap that wherein you bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that's Jesus speaking there. You know that the truth of the matter is that many of the things that we enjoy today, somebody else has labored for it. Um, I thank God for the life of our brother, Brock Eide, when he was taking us on um, in the empowerment service. He mentioned something that if you don't want to even make progress for the kingdom of God or for yourself, do it for your children. Do it for your children. Um, one of the reasons why many nations are developed the way they are is because the people who decided at some time to give themselves to a vision did it knowing that there is a possibility that they themselves will not be the ones to reap it. They did it with the hope that the people coming after will enter into that. Even the prophets who prophesied in scripture, when you read the book of Hebrews, you see that they were saying things that they were not sure about. They knew themselves would not see it, you know, but they said it in advance, preparing the way. So I want us to, one of the things that we as a people, especially us black people, I'm sorry to be a bit very, um, um, 
uh, what's the word now? Specific, Specific and um, maybe not politically correct. But the truth of the matter is that we black people really, really need to wake up and start thinking generationally beyond our time. Beyond our time. The short termism is enough. It's enough of thinking, well, I have to be the one to reap this thing while I'm here. That is why Nigeria is still the way it is. I'm not a politician. I will never be a politician. In fact, God forbid that I be a politician. So that's not what I'm trying to do here. But beyond that, the truth of the matter is that we need to start thinking. I was discussing with my mom the other day, and I was just saying that part of the problem that we have, but now we are waking up to, is that most of the people who have come into power do not think beyond their lifetime. They are only thinking about their lifetime, lifetime, and at best, maybe their children. But we need, if things are going to change, if you know that you want your name to be recorded somewhere, you know that the Bible talks about the fact that a testimony is not even, a, a testament is not, doesn't come into force until the testator is dead. So your life might really not matter while you are alive. But will it matter when you are gone? Because at the end of the day, if your life only mattered when you were alive, your life is too small. If your life only mattered while you were alive, your life is too small. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will grant us the grace to sow generationally in the name of Jesus. We will not reap only what the previous generation have sown, but we will also sow greater greater things. Jesus Christ said that the, the things that I do, greater things you will do, which means that it is a failure for our generation if all we do is benefit from what has been done. As a matter of fact, we are supposed to improve on it and that's the joy of the fathers that they can look at us and say ah, these guys are doing even better than we did. In actual fact, it's not that we are doing better than we did, it's that we are starting from where they stopped. Paul spoke and he said that no other foundation can one lay, which is Christ. You know, he said that he's building upon it. So everybody who is building on it, be careful how you build. Be careful how you build. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Your time, your life. Um, we have the next slide. There's no clicking. Okay. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 that he has made everything appropriate. Another scripture will say beautiful in its time. He says he has also set eternity in their hearts. So you are seated right now trapped in time, but God has put eternity in your heart. Praise the Lord. So this is the reason many of us can dream. The reason why you can dream and see beyond where you are, you can sit here now and you can begin to travel in your mind. The reason why you can do that is because God has put eternity in your heart. Okay? You are able to dream beyond your years. It also means that we have unlimited potential and possibilities. The truth of the matter is that if you can conceive it, you actually can be it. I know that that statement has been abused and many of us has take, have taken it lightly. The fact that it could come into your heart means that it is a possibility because nothing, nothing comes from nowhere. Nothing actually comes from nowhere. And God has put that eternity. When, when God was going to create the earth, he dreamed it. He dreamed everything. He dreamed about you right there where you're, where you're sitting. He dreamed about you. He's that big. He's that great that he could dream about you, Rachel. He dreamt about you. Grace, as you are small there, he dreamt about you. In the eternity past, he dreamt about you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, one of the things that I've started benefiting from having a child is, you know, looking at them and trying to almost picture myself as God. My, my wife says that you have a God factor. She says uh, that, is it God factor you call it? You call it, say, God complex, thank you. I don't apologize for it. <laughs> So I have a God complex. I mean, I like to see myself as God. I say, well, you say, ye yeah, are God. Yeah. So we are, we are not God. We are not Elohim. 
but he has made us in his image and in his likeness which means there are certain functions that we share with him there are certain functions that we do share with him we don't have his omnipotence we don't have his omnipresence we don't have his omniscience but you agree with me that you can be present physically here but your mind can be somewhere else so to a certain degree you can be present in more than one place okay you are also powerful to a certain degree and you also have knowledge to a certain degree so we do share some of god's qualities not to the degree that he has it but to a certain degree so children i was talking about my son you can see them and they're just playing and 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 they're in so many places telling a story see my son is uh, uh, composing songs every now and then singing i'm wondering where did you hear that one again you know he will be there he'll be driving his plate you know talking about one thing or the other as he's moving the mind is he's seen so many things my question is how many of us still still dream till today and or how many of us when we find ourselves dreaming say nah not you i know that happens to me and the truth of the matter is that if you really check even though you still dream, if you were to check yourself, if God were to help you remember how you used to dream when you were younger, you will notice that as you are getting older, your ability to dream is slowly reducing. The ability to dream and believe that dream that it will be a possibility or it will happen, the storms of life is knocking it out of you. The flood of life is drowning you, drowning it out of you. But that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we must know, we must know that God has put great potential in every one of us. He has put eternity in our hearts. Eternity, eternity. There is no limit to what you can do. But there is a caveat to that. Okay? There is a limit as far as time is concerned okay job chapter job chapter 14 verse 5 to 6 it says a person's days are determined you have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed so look away from him and let him alone till he has he has put in his time like a hired labor i want to read that in a simpler version okay so that i can give you a bit more explanation as to what i'm trying to say this morning job chapter five okay chapter 14 sorry yeah from verse five i'm going to read easy version easy version says you have decided how long people should live which means that as far as god is concerned if he has said that you are living to a hundred or ninety four or whatever it is settled forever in heaven your assignment is to know that and hold on to it praise the lord it says you control the number of months that each person will leave this is the sovereignty of god although even the sovereignty of god we can limit it in our own lives but as far as he has his concern you, you can't you can't you're not supposed to even if satan wants to kill you right now He's not supposed to be able to, as far as you can key into this and lock into it and say, hey, God said that I cannot die till I'm X amount of age. So even if you are sick, you know that you shall not die, but you shall live to declare the glory of God in the land of the living, the Bible says. Praise the Lord. It says, nobody can live any longer than that. Which means if God says you are supposed to live until 20 um, no, let's say 2100 for example now if God says it that is what you are supposed to live to and you can't go beyond the day the possibility that you could stop before then is up to you and Satan whether you allow him to, 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 to have his way but as far as God is concerned he has decreed it the day the specific day which means you can leave this place going to God in prayer to say Lord in order that I can prosecute everything that you've given to me on earth without fear without haste in my soul time is running out time is running out without haste i need to know when what is the number of years that you've given me because you will agree with me that one of the reasons why many of us are so much in a hurry myself included 
is that we feel like time is running out. So there is, there is a certain haste that causes anxiety when, when the things that we are hoping for, we are trusting in God for, has not yet come. But if you can trust God, if you can get information from God that you, you are not going to die till next day, you won't be worried. You know that Job, with everything that he lost, when God replenished him, the Bible says God increased his years. He still lived for like, I think, a hundred and something more years. So that God, God did not just bless him and say, okay, now you are blessed, you can die. No, he allowed him to enjoy that blessing for a number of years after which. That same God is the same God that exists today. God does not change. The Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 6 says, So do not watch us. Leave us alone. We must work for the time that you have decided. We must work for the time that you have decided. Please leave us to work in peace. Which means that God has an expectation for every one of us here. God has an expectation for you, Bukumi. You don't know yet, but he has an expectation for you. Some of you are afraid to look at me, so I won't call you. <laughs> if I knew everyone's name, I'm calling you one by one. But I don't know everyone. Even my small son there, Israel, God has an expectation. Israel, me, I have expectation for you. God has his own expectation for you. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Now that we have seen that, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13 to 17. Is anybody like that guy over there? Anyone? <laughs> he said, we must awake and redeem the time because the days are evil. I'll have you know that evil does not necessarily have to do with witchcraft. In fact, anything that is out of God's purpose is evil. Anything that is out of God's timing is evil. So let's not think of evil as only harm. Anything outside of the will of God is evil. Praise the Lord. So I want to read that scripture, Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Sorry, please. How many minutes do I have? I forgot to, because we took a bit more time. If you can tell me what how many minutes I have left. You tell me. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, um, verse 13. I'm reading from verse 13. It says, But all things that are reproved are made manifest by light. For whatever doth make manifest is light. Because I'm not here to preach. I will run away from this verse. The temptation to begin to preach on it is very high. My wife is exhausted. Verse 14, it says, Wherefore he said, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Which means, until his light is in you, you can open your eyes all you want. The truth of the matter is that you are still asleep. So many of us can quote the scripture, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of God is risen upon you. The Bible says that gross darkness has covered the earth. How many of us are aware that gross darkness has actually covered this earth right now? Some of us may not know. But again, I will resist the temptation to dwell on that and focus on what we are teaching. Praise the Lord. Verse 15 now says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, meaning carefully, meaning walk with intention, walk with purpose. Praise the Lord. It says, but uh, it says, second, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Which means, any time that you are outside of the will of the Lord, you are not walking in understanding, you are not walking in wisdom. It doesn't matter how intelligent it might look, if you are not walking in the will of God. You are walking foolishly. That is the honest truth. But glory be to God that I can go before the Father and say to him, Father, you said that uh, if anyone lacks wisdom, he should ask. And you give it willingly. And you don't scold us. He's not going to mock you and say, see, you don't have sense. No. So every day I'm happy not to have sense. 
and I can go to him and say, Lord, you know my frame. You know that this boy doesn't have sense. He's lacking. I'm lacking it. See, seriously, it's an infirmity in me. Help me. Help me. I don't know how to execute today. So much evil. The Bible says sufficient is the evil for today. That job you are running into that looks like it's good. If you are not seeing it with the eyes of God, it could be evil. That retirement or, 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 or that sack letter that you are receiving, if you judge it with the eyes of man, you might think that it is danger, but God might be saving you from something. So we don't see things as God sees things. Then we are foolish. But when we can see things with his light, the Bible says, in thy light we see light. Until we are seeing things the way God sees things, we might miss it. I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So, we must awake, you know, and redeem the time. To redeem means to buy back. Which means that time is already against you. Time is already against you. From the very day that you are born, time is already against you. You might be thinking time is against you because you've made a mistake. No. A time was already against you the minute Adam fell. So it is only in Christ that you can redeem time. It's not, it's not the motivation you get from anxiety that will charge you up to be able to redeem time. It's the light of God. It is true that time is against you. But it is only the light of God that can help you. Praise the Lord. You must therefore have a sense of importance as you use time. Have a sense of importance as you use time. Psalm 90 verse 12. Psalm 90 verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto understanding. That we might apply. So, which means there is something about a countdown clock that can give you wisdom. Provided it is not with the eyes of anxiety and haste that you are looking at that time. The only way you will avoid haste and anxiety is when you are in the will of God or in the light of God. So we must be conscious of time. We must be aware that it can, it can cause us to be anxious. That haste. It, 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 it does do that to us. But when we commit all to God, there is a hymn that says, uh, My times are in thy hand. Praise the Lord. All right. So, that's the end of my preaching. What is time? This I heard from Daddy. Time is the smallest unit of destiny. Time is the smallest unit of destiny what is time time is a story you can leave it on that slide time is a story of your life being told in successions that's what time is the story of your life is being told that on the 30th of july at 11 16 owe was standing here and he was talking to people about time and god forbid he was not wise enough to learn even that which he was teaching so his teaching is now judging him god forbid so as you are seated here in the archive in the annals of life something is being written you see there is a book that has been written about you according to god's plan your assignment is to keep on keeping with that writing in this realm because the one he has written is in eternity but it can change don't let god be editing your life jesus christ himself had to do certain things that it might be fulfilled what was written so many times you'll find that life can be easy once we know what is written but when we don't know what is written or where to find what is written, we will be walking in our own wisdom, the wisdom of the world. We will 
not build according to God's pattern, but we will be building according to society, according to what is popular, according to what the times and season dictates. So how you dress today is des designed by who? In fact, right now, I think all the shops now, unfortunately, girls are at the mercy of, is it Generation Z now or whatever? Because these fashion people will not design anything that is outside of the focus group of a certain generation of people. That is what happens. So many of us can be confined, subject to whatever is out there. Because a certain people have said that this is what must be in vogue. If that thing does not conform with God's will, what are you going to do about it? Or more tragic, if what are you doing if you don't know God's will? The Bible says, be not unwise, but understand what the will of God is. Praise the Lord. So time is a story of your life being told in successions. Time is an opportunity to try again. So many of us may have failed so many times that we think that's the end. No, thank God, it didn't happen in eternity. It happened in time, which means I can try again. You can do it over because you are in time. What is time? Time is an, op is an opportunity to get things right. So what you got it wrong yesterday? You can get it right today. Even if you get it wrong today, who says you can't get it right tomorrow? The psalmist said, uh, um, is it, Rejoice not over me, my enemy. Though I fall seven times, I shall rise again. Praise the Lord. What is time? Time is an opportunity to heal. So many of us have been hurt. Either hurt by a spouse, hurt by a dear friend, hurt by parents, or whatever. We know the saying that time heals all wounds. What that means is that over time, with the right things in place, that wound can heal. So we must be careful not to just think that it's just the passing of time. No, it's an opportunity. So what you do as time is passing is what will determine what then happens. But you must know that the possibility of your healing exists in time. He has put eternity in your heart. So I'm poor today, but I know that somewhere in time, somewhere in time, I have his riches. And I'm not just talking about heavenly riches. Somewhere in time, this, even in this physical earth, I have the riches of God. Somewhere in time. So I'm walking towards it. What is time? Time is a signal of hope. If you have lost hope, you have lost everything. But I'm here to tell you today that Jesus Christ can restore your hope. Why? Christ in me, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. Time is an encouragement. Things won't always be the same. I love saying that all the time. It's like music in my ear. When my wife would talk, shake her head and say, ah, this, I say, don't worry. It's not always going to be like this. You are single now. You are watching. I was watching one film on Netflix yesterday. I said, this one is killing our single people. Thank God I'm married. I even watch people that are happily married. Everything is sweet, sweet, sweet. It's not always so. Let me just tell you. There's you, but you, everything will be fine eventually. Uh, but when you watch films, it looks as if it's sweet. Every, it's not sweet every day. It's not sweet every day. But in any case, when you're watching those things, of course, they're trying to show you their best life and all that. You'll be saying, God, when? God, when? Please, single people, don't watch. If you see romance, don't watch it too. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> but there is hope. There is hope. Praise the Lord. Tell yourself, I'm not always going to be single. <laughs> Sorry. That was just for the single people here. Eh? I know that you want to be married one day. Yeah, that is. Some of us are getting married soon. Eh? They are not. They can say it with confidence because now they've set the date and the time. Once upon a time, they didn't know the time that that was going to happen. Eh? So time is a signal of hope. Praise the Lord. It's an encouragement that things won't always be the same. Time is a chance to become who God 
has destined you to be. So it is written, see, that in, in Hebrews, I love that so much because uh, 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 the Bible was talking about Jesus Christ and, and, and Jesus Christ said, this psalmist was the one, of course, prophesying that Jesus Christ in eternity past before time. He said, he said sacrifices and bond offerings, thou will not, but to do thy will have I come. A body thou has given me. Anytime I read that scripture, I say, yes, yes, yes. You have given me body to do your will. So everything that he says, he said, no, it is written of me in the volume of the book. I'm searching, the Bible says, search the scriptures for in it. You think you have like the same scripture say, you, the, you do air because you don't know what the scripture says. So you must search scripture. The light of God through his spirit must guide you to search it and find it because written in this book is something about every one of us here. Maybe if you check very well, you'll see your name written. It's written there. It is written. Is it not easy to find where you are going when Satnav is telling you where to go? Even when you know the way, do you know that there are many ways to get to the same destination? Some places might be blocked, but thank God for ways. Everything inspires me. Now, anytime I'm driving, even where I know where I use ways, and uh, my wife will say, don't you know where you are going? I say, this is why many of you have abandoned the Holy Spirit. You know where you are going. <laughs> you know where, that's your problem. You know where you are going. I don't know where I'm going, for goodness sake. Every day. Lord, how is today going to go? Because me, I don't know, but you've seen it. So I can trust him. If I can trust ways, why can't I trust the Holy Spirit? Praise the Lord. All right, so time is an opportunity um, is, is a chance to become who God has destined you to be. Praise the Lord. So, next slide, please. How can time be used? Time can be spent. Time can be wasted. Time can be invested. Time can be enjoyed. Time can be spent. Time can be wasted. Time can be invested. Time can be enjoyed. I have done all four of this. God help me. I'm still doing all four of this. Both wasting and spending. But my assignment is to try as much as possible to certainly avoid wasting. Spending might still happen every now and then because till Jesus' face I see, I'm not perfect. But my assignment is to make sure I avoid those first two things. As you get older, it even becomes more dangerous for you to be on that lane. Praise the Lord. So when I say time can be spent, what do I mean? When you are spending time, you get no return on investment. There is no return on investment when you are spending time. How do you know? If you cannot think of any worthwhile benefit you received from spending two hours talking to don't have a name so that I don't call it a wrong name by mistake. <laughs> Let's say Labaja. If you can, if you spend time with someone and you cannot pick something that, that did something for you, you have spent that time. There is no return on investment. <laughs> if you, and you know that it's possible for you to spend time with someone and even though that person was giving you value, you took nothing. For example, God himself knows that I'm giving value today, right now. Because he's the one that gave me this thing that I'm telling you. So, if you live here and you got nothing, you spent your time here, but it's not my fault. It's not my fault. I know it, it took me time. I was in pain yesterday. Even this morning, I was still asking the Father, is it still your will that I come? <laughs> the Father knows what I'm talking about. Because I was praying that maybe overnight, Another father spoke to him so that I don't have to drink this cup. Praise the Lord. Time can be wasted. What does it mean to waste time? It means that you lose something as a result of using your time for that activity. In other words, you are worse off as a result of how you've used that time. Ha! Huh? How many of you have ever been there? You, ah! God, why did I go there? Oh, such a waste of my time. How many of us have ever been there? 
I've been there many times. In fact, when I was young, when I was younger, because I'm still young, I know that some younger adults I say, hey, so you know you're old. I'm still very young. <laughs> when I was younger, if I used to, every time my friends would go out, they would party, they would enjoy themselves. I, me too, I wanted to do it. So me too, I would go and save money. Because when you go out, now you must dress well, you must have money to spend. So I would do all those things, and then I would go out. Every time I went out, my mother's prayer was working against me. I would come back from that party, and I would be asking myself, so what now? What did that do for you? Absolute waste of time. You know, unfortunately, you will not even know that you are wasting time because you don't know the opportunity cost. In other words, you don't know what you could have done. That's why it's a tragedy to live a life that is without vision. You don't know what you could have done with that time. So you just say, well, praise the Lord. Time can be invested. In other words, you gain something more as a result of how you've used your time for that activity. Which means there is a future return for the use of your time. For example, if you take certain things from here today, your life should not be the same. You should be able to see something in your life that must stop. That this, this, this thing in my calendar needs to go off. No more dates with this Netflix at so and so time. I'm not saying don't watch Netflix, I watch Netflix, but we know to the degree that we might be doing it that is no longer useful for us. You can cut a bit of it. What is your, what is your schedule, your daily schedule like? Do you have an idea? Do you know where you are wasting time? Do you know what that, what that time there can be used to? They are, they, I always say the hardest thing, it's easier for me to give you money than to give you my time. So I get very angry with young adults when we set for you people to come on second Saturday and you have agenda that only God knows what he's doing for you. I have things to do with my time. Kyrie has things to do with his time. Praise the Lord. Ah, the hallelujah was only the older people that could say it. I struck a cult. Glory be to God. <laughs> David, you want to play cult? The cult I struck. Do you know which key it is? <laughs> hallelujah time can be enjoyed time can be enjoyed so yes there is room for you to enjoy time okay it is important that you enjoy otherwise you just be what is all this earth that have been on what is it god made provision the bible says he has given us all things to enjoy so time can be enjoyed remember what i said about job after god has boasted with him the boy man was minding his business I say, God, I don't need that kind of trial. It's okay. I don't even need the glory that you will give Job. Just keep that glory. It's too, the suffering for that glory is too much for me. Uh, he said, he, he gave him time. After everything that he, he gave him time to enjoy it. So according to God's plan, even though there might be a little bit of challenge here and there, a little bit of discomfort here and there, what he's trying to do is, if you can do this thing right now, there will come a time where you will enter into that glory. Many of us who worked hard in university, I'm not included in those people because I didn't work hard when I was in university, but I'm not going to give you that story. It's for another time. When, when you finish and you got that degree, many of you know how you were able to get jobs sharp, sharp, quickly. Some of us thank God that we are in time, so there was opportunity for us to go and do something else. And all the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the locust worm, by the mercy and the greatness of God, now we can go back and those people that laughed at us that day, and rightly so, we say, ah, Yusuf, how did you make it this far? The way you were going that time, we thought no good thing can come out of. <laughs> no scholars. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, so time can be enjoyed. You enjoy time when you are reaping the return on past time invested it is important to know that if you enjoy time so there's a caveat to this if you enjoy time more than the return on the time you invested you are crossing over to spending time and eventually wasting time there is a possibility that even though you are enjoying that time now you save money you are enjoying the money the savings is depleting, depleting, depleting. Very soon you will return. 
or you worked so hard you needed to sleep and then you decided that you will sleep and you will dream dreams and you slept beyond you will still have to pay for it. so even when we enjoy time which god has made provision for we must be careful not to cross over praise the lord yeah. okay next slide please how many of us have actually calculated how many hours there are in here i won't lie it's until i have to do this thing <laughs> that i want to go and check of course by reason of my work i know how many hours are in a week i know that one i know how many hours are in a month i know that one but do i know how many sorry not a, 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 a is this even correct? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I know how many hours a week, not in a month. Yeah, 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 sorry. I know it's 168 a week. Praise the Lord. All right. So, there are 870, 8,760 hours a year, 730 hours a month, 168 hours a week, and 24 hours a day. And every one of us have that same amount of time. Now, the reason why I put this here is basically to move you over if you are happy to take it. Move you over to please next slide. Something that I read in a book. Some of you may have read it by Malcolm Gladwell. It's a very popular book. And by his own research and whatever and empirical studies, I don't have the time for that. I would rather hear from the grapevine. Maybe I've read it, right? Oh, he's one of your clients. Oh, okay. Because I heard you not going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you approve of this book? Thank you. Maybe he said I read old books too much. <laughs> books that all prefer it. <laughs> I like the wisdom of the old. I like it. It keeps me safe. I still double it to those of that of the young. Anyways, he said that it takes ten thousand hours of correctly practicing something to become an expert at it. I agree. I actually agree. Ten thousand hours. Now I decided to calculate, as you can see on here. All right. What does that mean if I invest one hour in something correctly a day? How long will it take me to become an expert? The answer is that it will take you 27 years. That's tragic. Before I can become an expert, 27 years. What is remaining? <laughs> Did you start when you were zero? <laughs> what is remaining? So that's tragic. I said, no, 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 I can't do one. I need to improve. So I checked two hours. Two hours came up with 13.7 years. It's slightly manageable, but you are also cutting into the time that you are meant to enjoy. Someone is following, thank God. So, two hours, if you want to be, and hope you know that people will not employ you if you are not an expert. Nobody is interested in using their life to allow you to learn work. If somebody is going to allow you to learn the trade with their lives, they will not give you anything in return, so that at least it is more or less trade by butter. Let them to benefit. Say, okay, you can learn with me, but we will do it without you paying. So it's it's kind of, so there might be a little thing that they might gain from you, but your own gain there is that you are now practicing your skills. Now there's many of us, we want to jump that process when we hear what maybe one person is earning. Or many of the people who we see they have advanced some young very well so some old one of the things we must look for is look really deep into their stories and hear their experience because that somebody became a millionaire at 25 years old lets you know that it's a possibility but find out what process the person went through if you are not doing that same exact process the input there are certain inputs that must equal an output. If that input is not there, you can never get that output. If that input is not there in the right specifications, it's not just the input. How many of us can cook jollof rice here? Uncle Sir, okay. It's only men is not there. Women say it's an insult. They will ask you. That's all right. It's okay. I know we cannot. Uh -huh. Uh, but we know that jollof rice, thank you, jollof rice is, 
Oh my God! The women in my life, eh, they can cook jollof rice. By women, by the way, my dear wife, eh, don't be afraid. I mean, my mother, my mother-in-law, and my wife. Oh my God! And they all have different specific. I know the taste of each of them. <laughs> is it not the same ingredient that they are using? But yet, there is a certain style. There is a certain way. My wife is very scientific in the way she cooks her own jollof rice. I know. I witness it. You know, so there is a specification that makes this the exact spec that you are looking for. Everybody is making Benz, uh, sorry, everybody is making uh, SUV, but everyone's own is different. The, 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 it, it might look like they're using the same general tools, but there's always something called a USP, a unique selling point. There must be something that is unique about that their own product. Whereas everything looks the same, all is not the same. So in in, 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 in in trying to become you know someone that will be recognized in whatever it is that you're going to do, because no matter what you want to do, people have been doing it before you, people are doing it right now, people will do it after you. Whether or not you will become a force to reckon with will be a function of your expertise in that thing. And you must be different. Kay was teaching and he was saying that the same topic, you give one person, he will teach it. This, they are all teachers, but they all teach it different ways. I'm sure he can think about a thousand ways how he will teach the same thing, completely different from the way I'm teaching. And he's all right. That's how it's meant to be. So, expertise does not necessarily mean that you do the same thing the way everyone does it. It means that you learn first of all the basics of this state and then you begin to hone it and find out your own god-given style and way of doing that thing if you spend five hours a day on something it will take you five and a half years to become an expert now that's a bit tolerable can you see why doctors spend five seven years to become what they are so when you become a doctor when you study medicine, you come out and you are a doctor straight. You know, it's included in it is PhD. You become a doctor of medicine. If you spend eight hours a day, in 3.4 years, you should be an expert. Eight hours, isn't that how many how much we are supposed to spend at least five days a week in our jobs? How many of us are experts at that role? How many of us can raise our hand and say we are an expert? A little confidence there, I like that. But it's the truth. After three and a half years, okay, let's say give or take five years, since you're only doing it five days a week. You should be an which means that if you have stayed in a row for five years, it's too much if you're not an expert. So even if you are in that same role, let it be that they can't promote you higher because you are at the cap. But your pay should be increasing. Your pay should be increasing. When I look at what my charge out rate in my company is, I laugh. <laughs> if you call my company and you want one hour of my time, you'll be surprised the bill they will give you for one hour of my time. I look at me and say, me, me, really? <laughs> How I wish that really every one hour I was getting that amount. But because the company has placed itself as an expert, it will employ me, pay me less, and then charge that for one hour of my time. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, I am an expert to a certain degree. I mean, I, I'm a chartered accountant. Those of you who have studied any professional qualification, you know how hard that can be. Not that degree is not hard, but there's something about professional qualification that make it even more harder. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we must be gunning to become an expert. All these things is possible in time. Steve Harvey talked about cutting grass. He talked about a guy who cut grass. He cut grass until his company of cutting grass was in millions. He said the guy that used to cut his hair, when he started with that guy, he was paying like $5 or whatever. At some point, he was paying $1,500 to cut his hair. Now he's bald. He said he paid the guy a retirement fee. Can you get so good that even though someone is not buying your product, they say, you know what? You deserve retirement fee and they give him gratuity for that. Some people are, see, okay, the life of a believer is spiritual. 
But our goal, and this has been my assignment. Oh, I must do the spiritual naturally. Five more minutes. Ah, okay. Maybe we should just read this day. I have, have told me so I wouldn't have been taking my time. It's dangerous to tell to tell me, not to tell me my time, because I'll just be taking my time to explain. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, I was going to discuss this one, but I will skip it. Um, let's just quickly jump to scroll. Leave this slide, because I want to be out of here. Option. You said five minutes. Can you move to the... Which one? Skip this slide. I was going to spend time here, but skip it. Aha, uh -huh, let's just quickly do this one. All right. It's very important that you know that life, really and truly, this might not be an exact science, but it's just about right, okay, can be broken down into five, into four stages, all right? Zero to 25, okay? At this stage, you focus on learning, dreaming, and experimenting. It's okay to make mistakes here. Be careful, though, as some of the mistakes that you make at this stage can deal fatal blows to your destiny. But mostly, the mistakes that you make experimenting within that age, you can correct. In fact, some of the mistakes actually even helps you later in life. Between 25 and 50, you must continue learning. Learning never stops. In professional qualification, there's something called continuous professional development. So you continue learning expanding and reshaping your dreams your dreams that you had should start getting a little bit clearer your vision for life reshape it mistakes so at this stage you continue learning expanding reshaping your dreams and executing it so it's not just about dreaming if without execution it's not going to come to pass it's not going to come to pass so I was talking about the life of a believer which is spiritual, but we must do the spiritual naturally and we must do the natural spiritually. That's another topic of its own, but I'm not going to go into that because we don't have time. Okay? So at this age, between 25 and 50, mistakes are more costly. So when you're within that bracket, you need to be careful, you know, uh, because there are certain mistakes that can be too costly. You will benefit a lot from having a mentor in this stage of your life. Because whether you like it or not, there are people that have gone ahead of you. Make use of them. Between 50 and 75, you continue learning. It is the time to start establishing legacy. Remember that God is telling a story through your life. That story is about to become written in the annals. So you want to make sure that that is being established. It's taking root. Okay? You need to have succession planning. In other words... Who are you going to hand over to? Many legacies have died because the fathers did not pass it to the children. Meanwhile, we are supposed to expand on things. This is one of the problems with our African generation. In, in, in this country, you will see a shop that has, ex has existed, a business, since 1670. But you, you, how many Nigerian businesses can you tell me existed in 1800 that is still standing? So we need to keep thinking that, okay? Uh, uh, mistakes at this stage can be fatal. Mistakes at this stage can be fatal. Why? Because slowly you are coming to a time where there is no more opportunity to make changes. So at the last stage, 75 plus, you are then at the stage where you start providing high level insight and support to prior stages at this stage you want to even be comfortable enough to share your mistakes i have mistakes that i can share but i don't want to share them now because you say can anything come out of <laughs> so of course you are making such mistakes look at you so let me first move far first uh, at 75 is you cannot start sharing your mistake why because people already know that you are successful and your mistakes will begin to encourage them say ah you made this mistake and you still made it praise the lord All right, um, all right, my time is up now. I had a few more, but I cannot share it. I'm going to hand over to Daddy. Thank you, sir. Maybe you still have to come back later. Um, God has always been beautiful. I was to give this message. I titled my Living a Meaningful Life. But on Friday, God said to me, Give the man, 
give the assignment to to the teacher that just left and I just told him it has to do with time there's no way I will be able to present it the way he presented it but let us assume for a moment and I'm just rounding up that you have a very rich benefactor who left you with a sizable sum of money I said to you that uh, till you die you have 86,400 pounds to spend every day 86,400 pounds to spend every day the caveat bill for that is that a penny for each day must not enter into the second day. In other words, the 86,400 pounds of today, I must spend everything today. And another 86,400 pounds will be given to me tomorrow. But there must not be a transfer of any amount from that of today. Till I die. You know that is not possible. It amounts to daydreaming. But as someone that gave you and has invested in you 86,400 seconds every day. And you have no choice. It has to be spent. It can be wasted. It can be invested. And it ought to be enjoyed. You can't take a second of today into tomorrow. And you cannot take a second of tomorrow into next tomorrow. But inside of it, like the scripture you read to us, is eternity. How well have you been living your life? There is a ray of hope with the last diagram that he showed us. At least for me, that I'm still within the eight bracket of 50 and 75. So uh, I'm not even, I've not uh, transited to the, to the last stage. So there is a hope for me. So if there is a hope for me, that's what? That's hope for you also. Let's be upstanding people of God. You, it's your time. You have the right to spend it. You have the right to waste it. But we have come today as Golden Arena, giving hope, in keeping lives, and affecting destinies. Invest your time. My children, invest your time. Don't waste it. Parents, many of us will waste our time in the presence of our children. I said it last week, watching My Africa Maji, or whatever the name it is called. It is examples that we lay down that our children will follow. The conclusion of the matter according to Solomon is this. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Life is fleeting. And there is someone that is waiting for you and me at the end of the day. Who will, by the record in his hand, we ask you, how have you spent your time? Time is free, but it is priceless. It can
can be spent, it can be wasted, it can be invested, it ought to be enjoyed. But the choice is yours on your hands. There is hope for the tree that is cut down. A living dog, the Bible says, is better than a dead lion. Talk to the Lord. I'm sure you can plug yourself into what he has been stated. And you can redefine your life even as from this moment. Maybe you are saying I've wandered far into what I shouldn't have. But Lord, today my mind is made up to live according to the expectation of heaven. Grant me the enablement to make a meaning out of my life, out of the time that you have given unto me. I will not come here without any proof to show for my existence. And I will not exit this life until I fulfill the purpose of God for my life. Lord, grant me the enablement, the will to be able to do your will. Father, we thank you. We bless and worship you. We have that you will point it all the chamber of our hearts, the message of today, the clearer call that it make haste, but the time is not in our favor. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus, what a, what a service, hallelujah, it's one of those words that you can't just stick on the shelf, but I pray the Holy Spirit will ingrain the word in our hearts, so that we won't waste our time we are here on earth, so that we will be accountable for the life that we have all spent, hallelujah. And I pray God will continue to give us the grace to redeem the time for the days are evil. And I pray that life will count for eternity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's one of those, not one of those services that you cannot jump here and there. Or something to ponder down. Something to meditate on. No matter how old you are. Be a year old, be 10 year old, be 15, 18. There's something there for you to kind of take in. And I pray it will not stand against us in the name of Jesus Christ. And peradventure, we have not been making use of our time effectively and efficiently. And that's an opportunity for us to make it use of And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Yeah, it's time to give our tithe and our offering. And um, I guess when the speaker always started, he said we, we, we could so generationally. What that means is at the end that when we are no more, that which you have done will speak for you. In the contemporary world, they call it legacy. So I want you to dip your hands into your pocket this morning. To give generously 
to this God. This God our own our time in his hand and is able to direct and usher our footsteps in the right direction. Now we would not waste our time, but we rightfully invest our time and enjoy our time in the name of Jesus Christ. And I think, like I said, we do not have to kind of be putting up scripture for us to kind of wind us in terms of giving our friend now. We are more than that. We are at the IRM. We should be operating at the IRM right now. So whatever you so purposefully desire in your heart to give to God, it's an offering. But one thing that you owe God is your tithe. And I believe uh, we've got envelopes. We've got... Yeah. So, put something in that envelope. If you're still using the envelope, cross the I's and... I mean, dot the I's and cross the T's. Like I said, let's run... <laughs> um, people are busy out of business. Let's keep them and let's find out another ministry to run. Okay? Let's move through this. God help us in Jesus' name. And I want you to pray upon that offering, upon that tithe that you have given this morning. That as that is living your hand, it's not living your life. But it will come back hundredfold in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray on your offering, pray on your tithe. That God will multiply you and increase you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you can put on the screen for me Psalm 115 verse 14. We can quickly use that to pray on our offering. Psalm 115 verse 14. And I think Pastor was saying that when he opened the, 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 the this morning he gave us Psalm 7121. That God will increase on. Say, may the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. Amen. The way God does that is when you sow generationally. That God is able to increase your dips and bounds from left, right, and center. And I pray God who have said it in his word in Psalm 115 verse 14, that same God will increase you Amen. more and more and it will increase your children and your children to come in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity given unto us. We want to appreciate you because you are a loving Father. Thank you for the opportunity to bring to your storehouse, O Lord, as you have commanded us, Lord Almighty God. Lord, we ask and pray the Lord, you will increase us more and more, generationally, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless your holy name, O Lord. We appreciate you because we know you are a good God. I would never lack anything, God. Because you said it in your word, and we believe in your word, and we trust in your word, and we hold you accountable to your word, because you are not a man to lie, not a son of man to repent. If you have said it, you will do it. And this is the confidence that we have in you, O oh Lord. That Lord, you will do that which, O oh Lord, you are proposed to do concerning us in this house individually and corporately, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless your holy name. We will never lack anything good in this house in the name of Jesus Christ. Money will answer to us when it matters in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, eternal King of glory. For in Jesus precious mighty name will pray. Yeah. And for those who want to give, but they do not have genuinely, Father, we ask and pray, the Lord, you answer this one's Lord the Almighty God. You make the Lord Almighty God, Father, they are part to cross to Lord, with lift us up destiny, in the name of Jesus Christ. And by this time next week, Lord, you will have more than enough to give, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your glory. For in Jesus, precious mighty name will pray. Amen. Maybe. Good afternoon. It's not morning anymore. Um, in continuing with Owe's message about your time, here is 
a few ways that you can um, spend your time during the course of this week. <laughs> um, on Wednesdays, we have our Bible study, which is at 7 p.m. on Zoom and on our YouTube channel as well. Um, the men's meeting and the women's meeting now takes place at the same time, which is every Saturday at 7 a.m. Um, on Sundays, we have our Sunday school at 9 a.m., um, which is here in person. Um, our congregational prayer meeting takes place every Sunday at 6 p.m., which is going to be on Telegram um, instead of the platform we used to use before. So since we've used Telegram, we all are used to it now. Um, the young adults, as we said, meet every second Saturday from 11 a.m., so let's please try and be there so we don't waste our time or um, his time as well. Um, for today, can the women please wait behind for a quick meeting after the service to see mommy and can the ministers as well wait behind for a quick meeting with pastor as well. And um, next week is our Thanksgiving service, so look forward to seeing you all there. Have a great week. Can we please appreciate baby? Amen. 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 Let's close the meeting and let us be upstanding. By 12, 11, sorry, by 11, 4, 59 tomorrow night. We will be ushered into the month of August and we thank God that he has not left us directionless. He has told us what his purpose is concerning the month. He has told us what his agenda is for the month. He has told us what his plan is for you uh, for the month. It was a behold, I said to you, life and what? And death. Choose life and live. It's a choice. Whatever the plan of God is, is a choice for each and every one of us because we don't force it down our throat. But I know that God is saying to you and me that regardless of the way year 2023 has gone and has been up to this moment, they do not call to mind the former the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do what? I will do something new. May you be receptive to the new thing that God has planned to do Amen. in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May His greatness locate you Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May you with God accomplish something great in the month of August in the name of Jesus Christ. By, by the time the month will be coming to an end, may you be able to look back and say that Ebenezer, God has been good unto me and unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. It does not matter what the condition is in the country, just like it Genesis 47. It was a different ball game entirely for Joseph. It's going to be a different ball game for you also. In the, in the positive, in the name of Jesus Christ. And so I bless you with the blessings of heaven. I commit you into the hand of the Almighty. He will navigate the mouth for you. You will not be a casualty. Amen. You will not fall a victim. Amen. His grace will be sufficient unto Amen. you. And your testimony shall be established. Amen. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Can we share the grace and fellowship together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. And the peace of God will be with you. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Amen.